First things first, um, shamelessness, or al-fahsha as it's called in the Qur'an and Sunnah, is one of the biggest problems and one of the biggest sins that are mentioned. It's a grave matter, mm -hmm. it's a very serious matter. At the same time, in the times in which we live, this is the most common sin, uh, in my assessment, this is the most common sin after disrespect of parents uh -huh. that our youth are involved in. Yes. It starts with things through technology like text messaging and Facebook or MySpace or whatever, uh, pornography on the internet and other sources, and then it moves on to the actual physical act of, of zina with Muslims and among non-Muslims. And this is a prevalent thing. It's a serious, serious problem. Yeah. Dealing with this is a particularly difficult issue uh, because it's very close to the heart for a lot of parents who are heartbroken if their children are engaged in something like this. And a lot of times the parents don't even know that a lot of their kids are engaged in something like this. But, at the, inshallah, we'll, we'll talk about its consequences in a bit. But what I want to share first is the, the key question that sister had in particular. Is there hope for me? Mm -hmm. Allah commands us in the Qur'an not to lose hope in Him. Yeah. And he speaks about that ayah of hope in the beginning with a with very interesting phrasing. Ya ibadi, O my slaves, alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim, those who have transgressed and engaged in violations against their own selves. La taqnatu min rahmatillah, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhuruba jami'a, no doubt it is Allah who will cover up the sins, who will forgive the sins, all of them altogether. This principle of Allah forgiving, um, before we talk about it more, I want to share, you, share with you another side of this picture. In Surah Al-Furqan, this is Surah number 25, Allah speaks about the person who commits murder or commits zina. Zina is the act of fornication. Uh -huh. Okay. Allah says about this person, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ Except what for the one who repented, and we have to talk about what repentance really means, وَآمَنَ And revive their faith, وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا And then engaged continuously and rigorously in good deeds. Uh -huh. So they did three things. They repented, revived their faith, and acted. They were good after that. Now, hear this out. فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ Allah says, Then for those people, their mountain of evil deeds, Allah will replace them with a mountain of good deeds. Uh -huh. So He will take your pile of filth and convert it into a pile of gold. If you can do just three things. First thing, tawbah, repentance. Second thing, revive your iman, revive your faith. Actually, the Prophet tells us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يسرق السارق حين يسرق وهو مؤمن A thief at the time that he's engaged in theft is not a believer. لا يزني الزاني حين يزني وهو مؤمن A fornicator, at the time that they're engaged in that act, they're not a, they're not a believer. Yeah. They have to leave that faith to do that. Yeah. Right? So it's a profound statement of the Messenger This is why when Allah talks about Tawbah, He says, first you repent from it, but what do you have to get back now? Your faith. Wa'amana, revive your faith. This uh, sister and many brothers and sisters like her, the first step really is stopping it. You have to stop all communication. You have to give this up in its entirety. If it is that you, you end up texting this person, emailing this person, talking to this person, when you're alone, then stop being alone if you're that weak. Be around company. Go to the masjid and sit there. Go sit with some other sisters. Go serve your parents. Because that'll take the, the, that opportunity of time that you had where you uh -huh. were falling into sin, it'll take that away. But sincerely repent. Sincerely get away from this sin. And if you're really, sometimes people are addicted. Mm -hmm. They hate themselves for their addictions, but they're still addicted. You know, like you know, drug addicts sometimes, they hate drugs, but they still take them. And then they hate themselves more for it. So the, the best thing to do is actually get out of that cycle. Right? So get out of the, those, those times and places and opportunities that trigger this behavior. Get out of that cycle. Get away from it mm -hmm. all, altogether. This is the first step you have to take. The reason you're drawn to this person is this is the first person that you actually emotionally attach yourself to. Yeah. And Allah made women uh, exceptionally loving and compassionate and, they're at and attached. So this is uh, 
you know, it's a, it's a strength that Allah gave women, but if it's used incorrectly or if it's misused, it becomes a weakness. And in this case, in your case, it's a weakness. So the men pray off this. The men pray off of that compassion. They'll be, they'll be nice and kind and flowery words. And they will, you know, throw words that, that have emotional meaning, but they don't mean them because they only have one agenda, fulfilling their desire. Yeah. And when that fu- agenda is fulfilled, she's nothing more than a piece of meat to him that's used. Go get lost. I don't love you anymore. I'd rather marry a Sikh girl, etc., etc. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you already fallen into this trap, and you already know that he's shown you his true colors. So, what you have to do now is get away entirely. Just completely walk away from this. Make tawbah. Spend your time in learning about your religion. Spend your time in worshiping Allah. You, I know you've cried a lot, but you need to cry not because you're sad over that guy. You need to cry begging Allah to forgive you. You need to shed sincere tears. There's not enough tears you can shed when begging Allah for forgiveness. Allah loves nothing more than the sincere tears that the slave of Allah sheds in begging forgiveness of Him. These are precious to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah speaks about the people of taqwa. It's really, I, I was baffled by this passage in Al Imran. He speaks about the people who enter paradise. He speaks about their good characteristics. But we're not here to talk about the good characteristics. In that same passage, he says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَ Whenever these people committed an act of shamelessness, they looked at something they shouldn't have, they touched something they shouldn't have, they went somewhere they shouldn't have, that was shamelessness, they gave in to their seduction, their de- desires, right? These people, Allah says, as soon as they أَوْذَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Or they wronged themselves in any other way. What's the first thing they did? ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ They immediately remembered Allah. Immediately, the first thing was remembering Allah. Now think about this. When we disobey Allah, how easy is it to remember Allah at that time? Like if somebody's stealing, would they want to remember Allah at that time? No. Yeah. When somebody's looking at something haram, would they want to say Allahu Akbar or Astaghfirullah at that time? No. They're so ashamed of their behavior, they don't even want to mention Allah. Right? So what Allah is asking you to do, what is commanding, the, the people of Jannah are people who do make mistakes. But as soon as they fall into a trap, immediately they remember Allah. Yeah. Then they ask Allah to forgive their sin. Sincerely ask to forgive their sin. And this... Asking for forgiveness, we have to learn, is not just saying astaghfirullah. You know the phrase in Arabic, astaghfirullah, yeah. which we learned in the sunnah, I seek the forgiveness of Allah, right? Uh, is memorized and people just recite it over and over, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. But really, what I mean by that is, you know, if you insulted your mother, and you didn't even look at her and you say, I'm sorry. Yeah. Just like that. Are you really Sorry. No, there's, an, there's a face, there's an attitude, there's a feeling when you're really embarrassed and humiliated and sorry. So that's what we have to be. But as advice to brothers who are fallen addicts to this thing, what they definitely, definitely need is change of company. It is most likely their friends that have sucked them into this environment. Or if they have good friends that they're not spending enough time with. So they, they need, they're not strong enough on their own, they need to be with somebody else. They need to be around better people. People that will save them rather than drag them further into hellfire. This is absolutely, absolutely critical. No amount of knowledge will help you sometimes. You can have the whole Qur'an memorized, but you won't get help yeah. from that. Sometimes the only thing is Allah's help, and even the most strongest. I mean, th- think of this example. Yusuf alayhi salam, a prophet of Allah. A prophet of Allah. He's in that situation. Beautiful woman is seducing him. He's in the room alone, nobody else around. And he actually is scared of Allah. But in addition, you know what he's scared of? Himself. The Qur'an quotes, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ nafsi." I don't consider myself innocent either. I don't say that I don't have desires. He acknowledges his human weakness. This is the greatness of Yusuf salam. In the end, as, as noble as he is as a prophet, salam, he's still a man. And a man naturally has desire for women. So he asks Allah to protect him after acknowledging his own weakness. A lot of times these brothers... They, they uh, live with the facade, this weak, shallow argument that, brother, I'm not that weak, I'm strong, I can handle myself. Yeah, I'm just talking to her, but what do you think I am, some kind of pervert? You know, <laughs> th- this, that's, what that's the mentality, I'm strong, I can take it. Yeah. You know? Here you have one of the greatest prophets, this man can take imprisonment. He can handle being thrown in a well, but he can't handle that, he asks Allah to protect him from that. SubhanAllah. He said, prison is better for me than what these women are calling me uh-huh. to, right? This is a very serious lesson. We, if you don't have that firmness, first acknowledge your weakness, and then second, make sure you have a change of company. Get away from that environment. Yeah. Get away from things that lead you to that.